So I think we don't need to spend time in the Newton theory, uh, momentum or energy. And we only need to spend a class talking about thermodynamics, gravitational force. And also I will uh, give you some uh, previous questions from the exams and uh, examples how to solve thermodynamics and how to um, use the equation um, to figure out the work, internal energy and the heat. So that's the Thursday's um, uh, agenda. So today I'm going to talk about the last topic, entropy. Entropy is a uh, interesting topic I think it was put forward by the thermodynamics, but um, people want to use entropy in the information science uh, or the uh, information technology. So that's a very useful uh, uh, topic. So I will uh, start with the thermodynamics, how people uh, discover this, um, this concept and uh, uh, after that, I will talk about um, how to use the information to quantify the entropy. Okay. So uh, before we start, let's review the Carnot circle, uh, the efficiency we talked last Thursday. The, the Carnot circle is a uh, uh, heat engine expansion and the compression circle we use to figure out what's the maximum of the efficiency for heat engine. And the results show that the efficiency of a circle is equal to the work done by the heat engine over the absorption, the heat absorption. If I use QH absolute value to represent the heat absorption, then the efficiency equal to W over QH. And when uh, figure out the last Thursday that the efficiency has a maximum value, the maximum value equal to one minus uh, the temperature at the cold reservoir to the over the temperature at hot reservoir. So that means if the heat engine work between these two temperature, the maximum efficiency is equal to this uh, formula. And so how does a Carnot circle um, process? We have four process, four steps. First one is as a thermal expansion. If uh, the heat engine start from position A and um, the first process is as a thermal expansion. So we need a constant hot temperature and this, under this temperature, um, this heat engine expands the volume and and to the point B at the position B. In this process, temperature is constant, and the because this is uh, expansion, so the engine absorbs heat, absorbs heat, absorbs heat, and absorbs heat. We know in the isothermal expansion, the absorbed heat equal to N R T H times log and the ratio of the volume. So the volume is Vb, volume is Va. So the ratio of volume. Okay, this is heat absorbed by this process. Okay, the second step is an adiabatic expansion. The adiabatic expansion is from B to C. In this process, this is an adiabatic process. So the heat is zero. Uh, the heat engine doesn't absorb heat. All of the internal energy will convert into the work. Okay. Okay, this is the first two process. The third one is as a thermal compression. After the expansion, the, uh, the piston is going to move backward. So we have a compression. The compression is from C to D. This is a compression and temperature is a constant. So I'm going to use uh, temperature at the cold reservoir because the compression, the temperature will decrease 
So I use a cold reservoir, cold temperature to represent this process. And under the process, the heat engine is going to release heat. And the releasing heat is equal to NRT, cold temperature log. And let's use absolute value to avoid the uh, confusion. So the heat released by the engine equal to NRTC log, the ratio of the volume. I'm going to the large volume over the small volume. Uh, so this is C, from C to D. Then I have a positive number here, but you need to know this is a release. The first one is absorption. Okay, so the last step is from D back to A, and we have adiabatic compression. For adiabatic compression, the heat is also zero. So that means um, we only have two process of absorb heat and uh, release heat. So in this case, we can calculate the efficiency for the corner circle. Oh. The efficiency equal to the work over the heat absorption. And then we know the heat absorption uh, is positive and the work equal to the absorption minus the release. Okay, this is the formula. We know the work equal to the change of heat. Okay, QC. Okay, let's uh, put the number into the formula. So QH, QH is here, uh, absorption equal to N, and this we can simplify as 1 minus QC over QH. So we have 1 minus QC, QC is here, NRTC log um, VC over VD. Over the heat absorption, that's NRTH log VBV over VA. Okay. And you can find the NR just cancel. How about this one? And let's figure out the relationship between those four volumes. We know from A to B, the, uh, from B to C, this adiabatic expansion. Draw this diagram here, V. A, B, C, D. Okay, from B to C, that's adiabatic. Okay, for the adiabatic process, we have a relation between the volume and the, the temperature. Follow this formula. Temperature times the volume of gamma over one is equal to constant. So that means this combination at position B equal to this product at the position C. Okay. And let's figure out uh, these four parameters at B and C separately. At B, the temperature is hot. At the C, the temperature is cold. Okay, this is isothermal. So we have at B, that's pH, at C, that's P cold. And how about the volume? Volume at the position B is VB. Volume at the position C is VC. So this is the first formula. The second one, let's check from D to A. From D to A, we also have the similar result. We have the D equal to A. Okay, how about the temperature? At the point D, the temperature is cold temperature. So I can change this subscript temperature C, cold. Okay. 
at A, the temperature is hot, so pH. Okay. I'm going to use um, this guy, divide by this guy will be equal to this guy divide by this guy because they're equivalent. So we, I'm going to use the black box, do the uh, division equal to the yellow box, do the division. So we have pH, so I'm going to use the first equation divided by the second equation. So we have th Vb gamma minus one over th Va gamma minus one equal to Tc over Td. Okay, so I just use equation one divided by equation two. I got this relation. And you can find that the temperature just canceled. And the power also canceled. So that means we have Vb over Va equal to Vc over Vd. So we have this product log Vc over Vd over log Va, Vb over Va equal to one. So the efficiency of the Connor circle is equal to one minus cold temperature over hot temperature. So that means Connor circle give us the maximum efficiency and all of the efficiency for other circle in the heat engine, the real circle should be smaller than the Connor circle. Connor circle equal one minus the ratio of the temperature. Okay, let me take a pause here. Do you have any question? Okay, so let me move to the entropy. Entropy here, I give you the definition. Uh, we use delta S to represent the entropy. I will tell you what does this mean? What's the meaning of the entropy? Who gave the name of the entropy? And uh, this definition said entropy equal to the heat, the net heat, net heat. Net heat means the absorption Uh, hold on, we have to use the value. Uh, absorption plus release. And absorption is positive and uh, uh, release is negative. So as uh, the delta Q has a positive sign and a negative sign. Um, so if this absorption, this is a positive. If this is release, this is negative. Okay. And over the temperature, in the process. Uh, I give you an example. If we have isothermal expansion, pressure, volume, and the curve, isothermal expansion. Uh, the isothermal expansion we know Q absorbed is equal to nRTH. Or we'll just use T. Okay. Use the temperature is T, it's isothermal. And our log volume at V V one V two volume V two over V one. Okay, this is a, a heat absorbed by this process, and the entropy we can get is delta S plus delta Q over T, and that will be equal to N R. So the temperature cancels, so we have log V two over V one. This is entropy in the isothermal expansion. Okay, this is an example of how to calculate the entropy. And the entropy um, change, the change of entropy could be positive or the, or the negative, depends on the process. So if this is expansion, then we will have V2 larger than the V1, then we have 
entropy, the change of entropy larger than zero. And if this is a compression, then we will have V2 smaller than V1, then the change of entropy is smaller than zero. So if the change of entropy uh, is positive, that means entropy increase. If uh, the change of entropy is smaller than zero, that means entropy decrease. So for the expansion, the entropy increase. For the compression, the entropy decrease. Okay, then uh, I will give you another example. Why do we need entropy? So what does entropy tell us? Let's talk about the heat transfer. Okay. I have two reservoirs. The left one is cold. The right one is hot. And these two reservoirs connect together. And there is a very thin wall in between. And this wall, the heat can just penetrate the wall. And so the heat energy can transfer from the hot place to the cold place. Okay. During the heat transfer, let's calculate the entropy. There are two processes. First one, the Hot reservoir release heat. Okay, so the entropy is equal to the heat released from hot to the cold over the temperature at hot place. Okay, and we know this is a releasing process, so the entropy is smaller than zero because the heat is smaller than zero. Then the second process is a cold place absorb heat. So we have change of the entropy equal to the absorption uh, absorption absorption. Let me write here. release and over the temperature at the coat. And we know this is positive because this absorption is positive. And how about the total entropy? The total entropy I'm going to sum up this to entropy. So we have uh, release over hot temperature plus absorb over cold temperature. Right? And we know the energy conserve. So the releasing heat equal to the absorption heat. Right? And so let me use an absolute value represent the releasing heat. Your releasing is negative, so this is negative Q and absorption equal to the positive Q. Okay. So the total entropy is equal to Q, a positive number, and equal to one over Tc minus one. So you will find that um, the denominator are different, but the numerator is the same. And because the temperature at the cold, the cold temperature is smaller than the hot temperature. So this value is larger than zero. Okay, so if heat transfer from hot place to the cold place, the entropy increase. If we have a refrigerator and we reverse this process, we transfer the heat from the cold place to the hot place, then we will have a, a negative entropy. The entropy is smaller than zero. That means the entropy in the refrigerator decrease. So what does this mean? Um, this means right here, in a nature, in 
in a nature process or an intrinsic process. That means no um, other thing interfere this process. Heat only transfer from hard place to the cold place. Not a reversible. So um, if this intrinsic process in the nature only happen uh, the heat transfer from hot to the cold is the only thing that can happen. Um, it never happens if you see a cold um, reservoir transfer heat to the hot, trend, hot reservoir. Um, and if you um, don't put any energy into the system, or if you don't use the refrigerator to interfere this process, we only see hot go to the cold and not flip, not the reverse. Okay. So if we calculate the entropy from hard place to the cold place, the entropy is positive. That means entropy increase. So we, in other words, we can say in a nature process, entropy always increase. Here, uh, let me use another color. Entropy always increase. And the condition is in a nature process. Okay? And we don't put other energy or we don't in interfere this process. And this uh, conclusion was put forward in the 1865. The guy is called Clausius. And he named um, this phenomenon as entropy because in the Greek word, the entropy means the intrinsic direction. So Clausius gives uh, this process, if this process is not reversible and it only happened from one direction to another direction, the intrinsic direction always goes to where the entropy increase. So in an intrinsic process, entropy increase. This is called the second law of thermodynamics. So thermodynamics means uh, entropy, everything, happens in an intrinsic direction and direction towards the entropy increase. Okay, that's the uh, second law. Okay, so um, I think this is uh, the topic from thermodynamics and people want to know uh, how to use entropy in the information science. So to I figure out this question. Let's talk about the phase transition to find uh, what does entropy really means. So here I have three states: um, solid, liquid, and gas. And let's figure out the phase transition temperature. Suppose this is ice, this is water, and this is vapor. And from ice to water, there's a melting point. And zero degrees Celsius, or you prefer the 30 degree Fahrenheit. And from water to vapor, there is a boiling point. Okay. And it's one degree Celsius or 200 degree Fahrenheit. Um, okay. 
then let's see at this temperature at this temperature from ice to the water when ice melts um the temperature doesn't change right if you use a, a thermometer to measure the temperature in the ice water the temperature remains in the degree it is constant but the solid the ice will absorb heat and until all this ice melt into the water so in this case this ice become the water it absorb heat delta q is positive and the temperature is constant so according to the definition and of the entropy we will get in this process entropy increase from solid to the liquid the entropy increase and if from the liquid to the solid as the entropy decrease then the same thing from liquid to gas uh, the water absorb heat and temperature is constant at the boiling point and in this process we would know liquid to the vapor to the gas, the entropy also increase. So we can compare the entropy between the solid, liquid, and the gas. We know the solid has less has the least entropy. And the vapor has the most entropy. And if we look at the structure of the solid, liquid, and gas, what's changed during this process? Uh, the mass doesn't change, the volume will change. But the reason that the volume change is because the structure of the molecule change. In the liquid, the molecules is uh, form a crystal. So the molecules evaporate at the crystal lattice. And you can see everything is in order. And in the liquid, molecules contact with each other, but the crystal structure disappear. So we see uh, a jamming uh, structure in the liquid. But when we check the gas, the gas system uh, molecules has different distance between each other and the position of the molecules are random. So if we check the water of the structure, the solid has uh, the highest order. Highest order. So uh, it's neat. Or you can see uh, okay. And the vapor has uh, the least order. And we can see this is messy. Okay. So that means we can give a conclusion. The lower entropy means higher water. Okay. So the least entropy has the highest order. Um, then the least order means the most entropy. So we can see the solid is water because uh, the solid uh, the entropy of the solid is the least because the water of the solid is the highest. Okay, so the, let me give you the conclusion here. This is the first conclusion I gave you. The lower entropy means highest water. Higher water. Okay, so then let me give you another example. When we talk about water, we need to quantify. We cannot just use our eye and to see which one is uh, more order, which one is less order. Um, because order we need to quantify is very hard, very hard to quantify. Quantify. And if we have two solid, for example, if we have uh, a stone, and, and if we have um, some other uh, material, and they are all solid. How can we say one is 
uh, most order than the other. So we need to figure out how to quantify the order. So I tell you, how do we quantify the order? Um, in the computer, if we want to see which one is in order, I will show you six pictures. So there are six pictures. And to see which one is the most order picture and which one is least order picture. I have a number one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And as we can see, the first one is the most order because everything is uniform and we only have a black picture in the first one. Second one um, is also order, but less order than the first one because we have two colors, the black and white, and each one um, occupy half of the position in the second picture. The third one um, is also order, the periodic pattern is a chess pattern, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven by four square. Okay. And um, between two square, they have different color. So this is uh, the third picture. The fourth one, um, it's very hard to describe to you. If you never see the, uh, the fourth picture, and I describe this picture to you, then you're going to draw this picture. It's very hard for you um, to draw exactly the same picture uh, based on my description. But the computer can, because I can tell the computer the corner of uh, each black area. I can tell you the coordinates of the black corner for, for example, this one so here, 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 here. I give the computer the corner and I see in this corner, we can connect this corner and get a region inside the region that's black and outside the region that's white. So I will tell the computer all of the corners of the black region. And after uh, I tell you all the coordinates and I type in all the coordinates in the computer, the computer will and produce exactly the same picture. But in this case, every corner is information. I will type it into the computer. And to describe this picture, I need to use a lot of words or sentence or numbers to tell the, to tell the computer. Okay. So number five, uh, that's very messy. So it's very hard for me to find the, the coordinate, but still, we can tell the computer and um, all the informations to let the computer um, produce the same uh, pictures. But in this case, we need more information than the last of four pictures. And number six, um, they are colorful curves. So we need um, more information to describe these pictures. So if we are going to sort the order of the sixth picture, we can find that the order of the first picture is smaller than, uh, hold on, is larger than the second one, larger than the third one, larger than the sixth one. So the first one is highest order. Because this is neat and we only need one sentence to describe the picture, that's four black. Right? And the sixth picture, that's the least order. And we need more information, we need most information um, to describe uh, this picture, to ask you to produce exactly the same picture. Um, okay, so the six, number six, it's not neat, it's messy. Okay, so if I'm going to use um, a zip folder to compress the six picture, um, how many uh, storage space do we need to use uh, to store the six 
compressed pictures. I'm going to show you uh, the number uh, here. Here, okay. I prepare six photos and one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can find the number one is the most water. The sixth one is the least water. And if you check the sides, the sides are the same. 75, 75, and uh, key byte. And then I'm going to use the computer to compress the six pictures. And in the compression uh, algorithm, the computer will use language to describe the six photo and to save the space. Then compress the folder. And okay. So then I'm going to double click the Z folder and you can find out I have six picture here. From number one to number six, the original size of the photos is the same, 75, 75. But if you check the compressor size, the first one, uh, it occupied the least space. The storage space is only eight kilobytes. But the last one, the number six, um, we need a lot of space and to store this picture. And compare with uh, uh, original size, only compress a little bit. So that means the number six picture um, is very hard to describe for the computer. So um, compare with these six photos, you will find um, the first one is most order, the last one is least order. So how to quantify, we use uh, the compression, the computer use the compress compressor size and, and the size can help us quantify this photo. Okay, so what does this mean? Um, let me go back to my slides. Okay. So here, um, we need to use language or we need to use information to describe the pattern. And if um, the pattern is high water, is in high water and it's neat, we need less information. So this is a very important conclusion. That means um, high water right here, high water, means uh, low information or less information. Just now we said that the solid has high order and less entropy. So that means less information means less entropy. Okay, so then we find the relationship between the information and entropy. In the computer, the information means the size, the storage size. Storage size. So if it occupied less size, that means uh, we need less information to describe that photo or that, that file. Okay, then uh, let's find an equation to quantify the information. So I give you an example. Um, to quantify the information, let's use uh, example to find um, the information. So I want to find the information, the winner of the 28, uh, 2018 World Cup. And we know the, the winner is France. And we have 32 teams, 32 teams. And we are using the computer to write the code to find the team. Where the team is? To find the team, we have two methods. The first one is called brute force. So 
So we are going to use the computer to search the team one by one until we find that team. So we're going to search the first one, Russia, second one, third one, are these the same? Are these the winner? No, then go to the next team. Are these the winner? No, then it go to the next team until we find the winner. Okay, there are 32 teams. So there are 32 possibilities. So to find um, the winner, we need a computer um, to do the loop for 32 times. So the number, to uh, the number of funding funding the work the winner is 32. So if you are very lucky and you search your first team is uh, the winner then uh, the work's done. but if you are not lucky you find the lost team, and you find the winner. So, but when you do the uh, the simulation, or if you are going to write code to find the team, you have thirty two possibilities, and the number to find the team um, is the number of the possibility. So you need thirty two times to find the winner. This is the first uh, algorithm we call the brute force. But the computer is clever, and um, the computer knows another method to find the team. That method is called binary search. Okay, so how to do the binary search? The computer is going to divide the 32 teams into half. Okay, then ask a question, are they in the first four groups? This first step, find and um, separate into Two and ask a question: Are they in the first two? Uh, are they in the first four groups? And the answer is yes. Your friends is here. So yes. Then the computer separates the first four team into half. It's the second step, and ask the question: Are they in the first two groups? The answer is no. Then it's going to separate uh, the next two groups into half. That's the third step. Are they in the left group? Yes, and separate into half. Are they in the top two teams? Yes, that's number four. Then separate into half. Are they in the winner, uh, friends? And yes, that's number five. So the computer only needs five steps to find the winner. So that means um, if we use a computer to do the search, we only need log two of 32 to find the winner. So that means uh, uh, this is better than the brute force. So the binary search increase the efficiency of the search. So we use the complexity to quantify the information. So if there are 32 possibilities, the complexity is defined as the log. Complexity defined as a log of the possibility. Okay, so, and if we have this number, we just use the complexity and to quantify the information. So the value of the information say the value of the information depends on how hard we get it. If we have um, more possibilities, for example, we have 64 teams, then um, the complexity will increase to log 64. Um, but anyway, the complexity only depends on the possibility to fund it. If the possibility is more or greater, then the complexity increase but the relation between the complexity and the possibility is a log relation. So the information here, we just say, um, if we have more possibility to find the useful information, that means that information is more valuable. So 
this idea was put forward in the uh, uh, 19th century. And that guy is called Boltzmann. Boltzmann. Okay. Um, he is a statistician and he said the entropy actually is a parameter to describe Describe the order of a system. And um, the entropy could be calculated by log times a possibility in a system. The W is a possibility and use a, a number of states or other, other things to rep represent. And you can find that. The entropy and the possibility has a relationship by using a log as a bridge okay. and times a constant. K is a constant. This is around 0.1. Hold on. Oh no, this is not 0.1. Okay. So K actually is equal to um, the constant we find in the equation states over the Avogadro number. The number is 8.3 and of got the is 6.02 times 10 to the 20th theory. So this is a very small number. Okay. But anyway, um, the relation just tell you that the entropy has a relationship of the possibility and the log, very important. And this guy um, died in the 1906 and uh, people want to give credit um, to him for discovering the relation of the entropy and the possibility. Then um, on the uh, on the grief, people just grief uh, uh, equation on the stone to memorize this uh, physicist. And this is uh, something like Albert Einstein's uh, grief. And on the Albert Einstein's grave, there's the equation energy equal to mass uh, speed of light square. So this is another equation on the Einstein's grave and similar. And there's the equation of entropy on the Boltzmann's grave. Okay, so I think this is what I'm talking today about the